Good morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Sandria Williams. Last week, I had the opportunity to sit down with Milwaukee Assistant Police Chief Ray Banks to discuss police community relations as well as the stop and frisk settlement agreement with the American Civil Liberties Union. Here to tell us more about that settlement and other important issues is Jared English. He's a senior field organizer for the ACLU. Hi, Jared. How are you doing? Thank you for being here. And uh, this 2017 lawsuit brought mm -hmm. by the ACLU of Wisconsin, it accused the Milwaukee Police Department of engaging in stop and frisk practices mm -hmm. that targeted African Americans and Latinos. Uh, that was recently settled. And so if you would explain some of what that settlement includes. Okay. So um, the lawsuit itself, um, as you said, um, um, sought to stop um, Milwaukee police from profiling um, and stopping and frisking unconstitutionally um, black and Latino people in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, some of the things that's, that are included in that settlement, which was signed July 23rd um, in the federal court um, by Judge J.P. Stattmuller, um, is um, a lot of um, provisions that um, increase the amount of oversight. And so, for instance, if a person is stopped, and when we say stops, we're not just talking traffic stops, we mean Anytime an officer um, stops someone either in the vehicle or walking down the street um, or what we call no action encounters. Mm -hmm. um, so anytime that an officer does that, they're required to document um, multiple things. So one of those things is um, the race of the person being stopped. Um, what we found out is that even when we, um, in our uh, data analysis and scientists uh, control for crime, control for economics, control for location, that no matter where a black or Latino person was in the city, they were far more likely to be stopped um, and stopped, not just stopped, but stopped unconstitutionally than their white counterparts. Wow. And so, um, so it's something that it, it was a long time in coming. The lawsuit itself was actually uh, pretty short. Uh, we filed it in February of 2017 and it was settled you know, July of, of 2018. Um, um, there are a lot of provisions in the sense of uh, community oversight. There's going to be what's called a, uh, a consultant, uh, also known as a, a monitor, a uh, mm -hmm. court monitor. Um, um, we like to call it a monitoring consultant. That person, um, or that entity, I should say, is going to be a group of people. Uh, will be responsible for analyzing all the data that goes through MPD in regards to their stops and how they interact with the community. Um, there are going to be quarterly reports that are going to be released to the public and to um, the ACLU and our plaintiffs. Um, and then another group that um, everyone's probably heard of in regards to the DOJ draft report, the Community Collaborative Committee, um, that group has been kind of um, um, solidified in the lawsuit. So they're going to also be a part of the oversight structure um, of MPD. All right, good mm -hmm. stuff. And so, as I mentioned in the open, uh, we just had the assistant police chief uh, from the Milwaukee Police Department, Ray Banks, mm -hmm. come by, and he said to us that you know he feels this uh, this particular administration is ready to be transparent and mm -hmm. ready to really do what's necessary to help improve the police and community relations. So uh, let's take a quick look at what he had to say. Okay. Well, we're all for trying to make uh, a change in policing philosophy mm -hmm. where we won't have those type of problems that uh, the ACLU has brought to our attention. Um, nothing since I've been on the police department has ever been designed, in my opinion, to directly impact um, a certain community because of the race of a community. The policing practices is what led to the unintended consequences. I know that sounds politically correct, but that's actually the truth of the matter of what happened. Mm -hmm. And with this new administration, we want to make sure that we don't put out policing practices that are going to target any group of people, not just the African American community. We want to make sure that these philosophies and these practices that we are uh, instituting out there that they don't have that unintended consequences because we're learning from the previous administration the type of things that we don't want to do and the impact that we want to try and avoid. And so after seeing that, your thoughts? So um, one thing that um, I think is true is that I think the new administration does have a genuine desire to be more community focused mm -hmm. and community aware. 
Um, I think Chief Morales in particular um, seems to be um, a person who is about um, engaging the community. Um, that being the case, um, you know, the ACLU, myself in particular, and I think the community, extra particularly, are in uh, very much trust but verify mode. And maybe even because of the history of MPD and everything that's transpired over the years, um, trusts um, after verifying multiple times and continuously mode. Um, oversight um, in regards to public servants, um, the public trust is put in MPD in the sense of the authority that they're given. Um, it cannot be violated. Um, it is their job to protect the rights of people as well as protect their safety simultaneously. You can't undo one to, to, to um, you know, promote the other. Mm -hmm. And so that being the case, um, you know, Chief, Assistant Chief Banks, Chief Morales, um, you know, a lot of the command staff who's taken over from um, the Flint administration, um, as, as he referred to, um, you know, I think they are on the right track. Um, that being the case, um, you know, they are taking over an organization that um, throughout its history has been incredibly um, um, systemically, um, intentionally racist, and maybe not in policy, but definitely in practice of some of the officers. Um, we have a department right now in the city that's 65 percent people of color, majority black, about 38 percent black, um, 65 percent otherwise altogether people of color, um, in a department that's completely opposite of that. And then on top of that, folks who do not live in this community. And so those are challenges, and I'm sure um, if not in public, definitely in private, that uh, Chief Morales, Assistant Chief Banks, and some of the other um, persons of color who've now been put in charge of this organization would agree can be challenges because there's a difference in cultural understanding, cultural awareness, um, and um, the perception of, of different things. And then the fact, and this is their own data, so our lawsuit, you know, we didn't go and, um, you know, um, have folks, you know, doing samples and things in public. We looked at MPD's own data their own data shows that they unconstitutionally stopped and frisked um, 350,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, and like I say, this is when you control for crime, this is when you control for location um, and economics and all that, it was still the case. Okay. Um, and so Chief Banks, you know, he's, he's a good person, um, but we definitely are in, in, in a permanent trust but verify okay. uh, mode. Fair. That's mm -hmm. a fair answer. And uh, before we run out of time, you guys, the ACLU Wisconsin, you're on a justice tour. Oh, yeah. So if you would tell us more about that. So the justice tour um, is so it's a few things. So um, the first is we want to make sure, um, particularly in regards to this stop and frisk settlement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I personally am of the belief that um, cases are great, but if people don't know about them, they don't know how to use them, they don't know how they apply to their own lives they don't matter as much as they can. And so the Justice Tour is to, um, with this large event, um, explain what that's about um, in the sense of the stop and frisk case. Um, and then there will be a series um, of, of smaller workshop-based events mm -hmm. throughout this year and, the re and next year where we get into the nitty gritty of everything. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna have the, the plaintiffs from the stop and frisk um, racial profiling suit, um, a good number of the attorneys who of the large um, legal team who worked on this uh, lawsuit, mm -hmm. and then a lot of our community partners who, you know, to be frank, you know, we would not have been able to do this without them. Um, the second half of the Justice Tour, I should say the second um, kind of part, um, is we're gonna talk about our Smart Justice Program. And so as a lot of people watching probably know, Wisconsin is not only uh, the place that incarcerates the most persons of color per capita in the United States, but mm -hmm in the country that incar incarcerates the most people per capita in the world, we are the, pers the, the state that incarcerates the most people per capita on earth. Mm. And so that should be something that makes everybody um, angry and that should be something that everybody wants to address. We spend more on our prison system here in Wisconsin than we do the on UW the system. system. That's right. Um, it's yeah. all very interesting stuff, and I definitely want to make sure we give out the details so people can mark their calendars Absolutely. and take part. The Justice Tour is Saturday, October 13th from 2 to 5 p.m. at Centennial Hall at the Milwaukee Public Library. That's 733 North 8th Street. Mm -hmm. You can go to their website at aclu-wi.org slash justice tour for those details. And Jared, what I wanted to uh, definitely mention is the Smart Justice Campaign. Mm -hmm. That's a statewide plan to cut incarceration mm -hmm. in Wisconsin. 
Wisconsin, uh, mm -hmm. you stated the statistics that oh, yeah. people, uh, when they're in another state and you say Wisconsin yeah. leads the numbers when it comes to uh, people of color it behind bars, minds, they're like, yeah. really? Wow, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. it really does really, um, it's, it's one of those things that stands out and uh, it begs for uh, a solution. Absolutely. And so uh, with that said, uh, you guys are going to be kind of taking a look at the stats, I'm sure, Absolutely. showing the system is built to house 17,000, but there's currently over 23,000 individuals behind bars. So uh, recently you had former Wisconsin governor, uh, Republican Tommy Thompson, mm -hmm. who apologized for the role that he played in building prisons while in office. Mm -hmm. And even he has said it's time <laughs> to change the dynamics. I thought that was an amazing oh, <laughs> statement. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts? Well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a necessary step um, forward. And then when you have a person who's you know, been as prolific in Wisconsin as Tommy Thompson has over the last few decades, um, him saying that is, is definitely something that people should pay attention to. Mm -hmm. um, and I think um, uh, in regards to, regardless of politics, because there's, there's a lot of people who are in a lot of ways policy-wise at fault. So you can talk about Thompson and, and building the prisons that he did. Um, then you can also talk about the Clinton administration and a lot of the things that they've done. You can talk about the current governor here in Wisconsin whose kind of claim to fame is um, uh, uh, truth and sentencing. And so what we see um, is that across the state, um, and Smart Justice is not just a, a state Wisconsin, um, the ACLU affiliate here in Wisconsin's uh, kind of plan is a nationwide plan. Mm -hmm. Because what we've seen as we looked at the numbers as you, you stated, um, is that we have a lot of people who, for instance, um, they came into um, prisons in Wisconsin under the, um, the a previous system where they the judge might give them, say, 15 years, mm -hmm. and then expect that the parole board would reevaluate every you know, few years and decide if they should be able to leave. Um, the current situation now is that that doesn't really happen. And so we have people who've been in jail um, much longer than even the, the courts intended them to be, um, and they're not able to be paroled. And then on top of that, we have crimeless revocation, which is basically, and in, in you can, uh, this is something you may even want to dive into, um, people can be revoked for rule violations. So when a person is put on parole, probation, and let go from uh, prison, um, they, have to, they have a set of rules that they have to follow. Mm -hmm. Those rules can be almost anything. So it could be, say for instance, I'm a person getting out of jail, or out of prison, excuse me, and I have to be um, on a certain spot at five o'clock. That could be a rule, and if I violate that rule, I have to serve the rest of my sentence. Wow. So um, there's between 800 and 3,000 people who that happens to every single year in Wisconsin. And uh, MSDF, which is the Milwaukee Secure Detention Facility, is where those people are housed. And, and it's a lot of times um, those facilities are housing, as you said, way more people than they were designed to. So we have not only two persons in a cell, we have a person on the floor who has to basically sleep against the toilet facilities of the cell wow. um, to be there. And this is a common thing. Wow. Well, I really appreciate you coming by and shedding Thank light you. on all of these issues. And just want to remind everybody, of course, Election Day is coming up on November 6th. And the ACLU also works to protect voter rights. Absolutely. Definitely something to keep in mind. Thank you so much, Jared. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Thank Jared you. English is a senior field organizer for the ACLU Wisconsin. Keep in mind their justice tour. It's taking place on Saturday, October 13th from 2 to 5 p.m. at the Milwaukee Public Library's Centennial Hall. For more information, go to aclu-wi.org slash justice tour. When we return to Our Issues Milwaukee, we'll take a look back at Milwaukee Health Services Incorporated's Laughter for the Soul 3 featuring Cedric the Entertainer at Marquette University. I had a chance to talk to Cedric before the show and we'll check that out right after this. <laughs> 